My name is Hugo. I'm from the University of Porto, and uh, I, did, I work at the um, central service that uh, supports all the staff of the university, and those are about 5,000 uh, teachers, 30,000 students, and we do some multimedia development as well, and we do have two main Moodle installations, so one for the graduation courses and one for the lifelong uh, courses. So those are our main tasks. Uh, in this project, we had a teacher um, of the uh, animal histology course. It's a course that belongs to the master in veterinary medicine. Um, and it's a kind of a tricky one. It's on the, in the first year of the students. Um, and what they do mostly is to analyze some images and find tissues with some diseases and some other things that I really don't understand. But what matters is that the students don't really like that. So the students want to get in touch with the dogs and horses, cats and whatever. Um, but don't really want to, to be analyzing images, looking for some odd disease. So this means they are uh, low motivation, they are low motivated, and the involvement in this course is not uh, very high. So that's an issue that the professor, Ricardo Marx identified. Um, this teacher, Ricardo, is also a very uh, enthusiastic, let's say, particularly uh, for um, QR codes. So this idea comes from the, way the, the time when no one used QR codes, but he kept pushing this idea, so we went ahead. The, so the strategy was to gamify this content to make sure that, or at least try, that the involvement and engagement of the students was higher. So he developed designs, cut off, did everything to build uh, a board game based, of course, on Monopoly, hence the name. Uh, and of course, also the cards and tiles are related with the course content, meaning histology. This was played uh, on site in the classes, um, and the students uh, uh, had QR codes that were linking to h5p.org. So the, the Ricardo, the professor, started doing this on h5p. I don't know really why, but the first version of the board game was uh, built on h5p.org. There were tiles with questions, of course, but also uh, help um, uh, tiles with help information. So if the student felt insecure, he could uh, um, uh, consult those help uh, information. They could also buy out some badges uh, in order to multiply the earned points. And so by the end of the course, those points could also uh, uh, bring extra grades uh, uh, for each student. So let me, here you have an image of a microscope badge that the students could add to their avatar and so multiply the, um, the points. So now I'll try to, let me see, okay, I need to move this. This is the board. The video doesn't have any sound, so don't worry. Um, those are the tiles. They are, of course, all related with the subject matters of the course. And here we have player one rolling the dice and going to a tile that I believe it's a question. So the QR code. In this case, it's a quiz, a question, 
And so this is something they need to know, those images, those awkward images. Um, and then there's the tile of help. If you need to have more information about a subject, so all the explanation, and all those tiles are related with the course content or with the university itself. So in this case, I think the player will go to a special tile and is a Senate decision, so a governance decision, and the student is awarded, I believe, extra points. Exactly, so trying to enhance engagement. And the last example is also a special tile where the student, uh, I believe, didn't return the books on time. So the library would remove some points, I believe it's the case. So this is the, yeah, so in this case it's actually extra points. So this is how you play it in the classroom all together. And yeah, so what the problems with this version w was essentially the lack of analytics. And so somehow it was easy for the students to cheat because there was no tracking of which tiles they were. And also it was somehow kind of difficult to know um, how many points each student uh, did have. So as you can see on the, on the picture, um, there are a lot of avatars in the same tiles and all of them have information about the points. So then the second version was built taking in mind the pandemic issue. So Ricardo wanted that the students were able to play uh, at home. So then we went to Moodle and of course using H5P. We had auto-enrolled, which was something new for us because usually our enrollments are dealt by our students' system information. In this case, any student of the university could enroll if he wanted to play this, this board game. Um, in this case, the QR codes were linking into stealth activities, uh, H5P activities on the course. So if the, stu the student only had one way to go to, the, to each activity that was following those QR codes. The questions usually only have two possibilities. They are right or wrong. It's not that usual sometimes, unfortunately, in Portugal. But in, in this case, they were right or wrong. They had a grade to pass of one, of course. So it was somewhat easier to track all of those things and make sure that the activity completion, um, let me just, the activity completion um, was only uh, set to get a grade. So this way, the teacher could know uh, which tiles uh, were answered wrongly the most or correctly the most. So this, the, by looking at the completion report, downloading it, the, the teacher could know that even though that question has been concluded, completed, um, was it right or wrong? So Moodle gives that information with colors and you can even download it and it's fine because you have the information on an Excel file. Yes, it was completed, the activity, but was it correct or no, or not? So this allowed for the teacher to know which batch of questions, which content the, the students were struggling the most. In this case, the main issues were that um, 
the fact that you actually need a lot of time to develop those H5P questions in this case. So, uh, and also the fact that you need to uh, set up each activity uh, with the conclusion and also the passing grades. So it takes a lot of time to, to get all that thing uh, correctly. And also doing that for several tiles, each tile, it, each question has also an, uh, an extra tile with the help information. So all of that took uh, uh, too, work, too much work for uh, the teacher and our service. So luckily, the third version, luckily at least for the teacher and the students, the third version was completely de uh, developed by a master student that is uh, working, I believe, still on, on that. It's a fully digital version, and most important, it does have a web app in a back end where anyone, any teacher, can manage the board, and most important, the tiles and the questions. So that means that this uh, board game can be uh, adaptable to any other teacher or course content. So theoretically, any uh, teacher at the University of Porto is able to build something like this without any uh, extra work and uh, technical knowledge. So that's a very interesting thing that comes up of this uh, project. So the main achievements. Have the grades improved? This is always the first question and probably the most difficult one to answer. Um, it doesn't seem so, but on the other hand, the motivation improved a lot. So the engagement and also the interaction between students uh, were observed and also um, were uh, visible upon on our feedback from the students. So we have inquiries where this was mentioned by the students, especially on these settings. So first during the pandemic and then afterwards, this was very interesting to, to see. So to the question, was it worth it? I would say so. Um, because we have a very good feedback of this by the students and we have the ability now to have other teachers to use uh, uh, the same concept of board game to another subject. So yes, it was worth it. So thank you very much. If you have any questions, go ahead. <laughs>